This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 422. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. We are all coffeeed up and pizzaed up, and some of us are, are up on that trip, though, fan. Uh, because we had a little early Thanksgiving. But we are ready with the uh, core crew with us. First of all, of course, John Chichilla. He's the gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going? And wouldn't you be down on the trip to fan? Not down up? on that trip of fan. I thought that was going to be up on the cap. Caffeine. I'm up on the caffeine down on the trip to fan. And that makes me just regular. <laughs> I guess not decaf. No, not decaf. All those. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Rewind. Retry. Also with us. She's the sales and marketing director over at the scare house. And they ain't done yet, folks. The Dutters is with us. Hi. Hi. I'm bringing the creepy to Christmas. Bringing the creepy to Christmas. I saw. I saw there was a picture of like a haunted Christmas. What's up with that? We have. Uh, we're open the seventh and eighth for creepy oh, Christmas. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Christmas. Christmas. Creepy Christmas. Creepy. I have so many. Oh yeah. I have so many questions about the commercial. Where's the house? Where? <laughs> it's the front of the museum. Is it the front of the museum? Mm-hmm. It, you get to really? Just sit on Santa's yeah. lap. There wow. Is Santa. I love it because you can't tell i'm mm-hmm. just like that's not the thing in there that can't be the thing in there uh-huh. i love how they shoot that stuff that's great Magic. go check that out um with the seventh and eighth uh and uh at the scare house that's awesome was, so uh this is the awesome cast what do i do next what is happening i, I literally just rolled in a half hour before we got recording here. um it is the awesome cast please check out everything at awesomecast.com awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com at awesomecast uh, on the Twitter and on the Facebook, check out the Facebook group where we have a lot of great discussion. And please discuss, subscribe and rate us on your favorite uh, podcast app and watch uh, video versions on the Facebook and the YouTube. And we are live every Tuesday on the Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, Saturdays at 9 a.m., as well as over uh, out on the West Coast, the405media.com weekdays. 9 a.m. Pacific time for producer Missy all the way out there on Sorgatron Media West joining us in the chat room as well as noon Eastern here five days a week. You can catch up on the latest awesome cast. And also, uh, if you want to be part of the studio audience hanging out with us or you are uh, looking to get some great advertising options that won't break the bank, you can hit up awesomecast uh, at sorgatronmedia.com and uh, get in touch with uh, producer Missy no matter what time zone she might be in. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, we, uh, big thanks to our uh, uh, supporters at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, and our longest uh, Patreon supporter, a fan of the show, $1 per month, uh, Michael Fedor. Thank you so much. You guys are really helping us keep the lights on here in the studio and uh, helping us keep it awesome. If you're getting some value, if you like what's going on here and want to see us do a bit more of it, Please let us know. So let let us know. No, yeah. Please let us know, and also please support us on the Patreon. I'm just gonna drink some more coffee. Yay! And uh, instead of usually we do the awesome thing of the week, but it is Thanksgiving week, and I thought um you know we, usually we we kind of go around and ask, what are you thankful for in technology and such, uh, and things that are awesome uh, this this season? What? Oh, originally it, it's Missy was typing. I, I, it just started off as you, but now it says you're lucky I'm not there to stab you. <laughs> what <laughs> did I do? <laughs> so I thought I thought she was happy or she was thankful for you. So the mushy thing turned into to, a homicidal thing. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, what did I do? I don't. Okay, 
I'm sure I'll have messages here. I'm sure she'll she'll let us know momentarily. Yes. Uh, so, Chilla, what are you thankful for so, while I try to figure out what's going on with all these caps in the document right now? So, um, my family is becoming more disparate across the United States. Yeah. Uh, my mom's side has already been kind of spread out between here, Baltimore, D- um, yeah, Baltimore, Michigan, Tennessee, my dad's side. My sisters are all starting to kind of move further. My sister, my one sister, the youngest, just moved out to California, and they'll be moving from California to Wyoming, I think it is. Um, so, wow. Yeah. So, so Let I'm, us know what the internet's like there. <laughs> yes. I will, because actually communication tools and what i'm thankful for is communication tools like facetime hangout skype the the tools we use here and the tools everyone uses to keep in touch with loved ones whether they're a mile away or many many miles away many many states away for that matter um i've really grown accustomed to using these types of tools my sister my other sister just did her gender reveal party for her um for her baby and we actually FaceTimed in my sister that was in California. Um, we've spent Christmases gathered around the laptop to talk mm-hmm. to family in Nashville in prior years. Um, and Christopher being four and having cousins in Youngstown um, has gotten more and more used to FaceTiming to keep in contact because we don't we, we see them at holidays and, and maybe once every couple months. But he definitely likes to spend virtual time talking to them, but he also wants to see them. Um, So I'm very thankful for those types of tools because when you think about it, probably other than people like us, they weren't the main, they weren't mainstream for everybody to either have on their phone or understand how to use it. Um, let alone the bandwidth to maintain the connection. It's really not <laughs> unusual to be at a holiday gathering, and uh, you know, especially if we're an extended family, and like somebody pulls out a FaceTime of the person that couldn't be there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 or, or you know, the, the new baby or something like that. So, no, I think that's been, I that that's got to be something for like the grandmas and grandfathers out there that have been around for you know before you know maybe my dad talked about uh uh, growing up listening to the radio they didn't have a television Mm -hmm. and to get to this point right you know just i I can't believe like what that must be like to to see that kind of growth to this to this yeah and the the frictionless experience too of turning a phone call into a facetime Mm -hmm. and the same goes for for android with is it allo you can kind of write. I don't the know anymore. Hang out, whatever. So yeah, right in the middle of a phone call, but you FaceTime. can kind of make that switch. Yeah, just just FaceTime across the board yeah. is probably like like good for every almost everybody mm-hmm. at this point. And now you now you have Skype appearing on things like Alexa. Mm-hmm. Sorry for those of you who I just set off their <laughs> jerk their home assistant. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> she's, she's just saying it's okay. <laughs> she just said it's okay. Um, so the. I don't know. It's just like this time of holiday, this time the holidays, people not necessarily always being close to one another physically can still kind of create that bond and that that connection. Oops, sorry, I had a, one of my communication devices were talking to me. Um, Everyone's talking to you. <laughs> but no, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's, that's a big, it, it lowers that barrier. And it, it's amazing seeing how consistent that is. Like I, you know, doing the the lift stuff, like just seeing people out there, like they will get in the car and they are FaceTiming with somebody mm-hmm. just as a phone call at that right. point. I don't know what the hell data plans like, but, um, but that, that, you know, that's not a thing. Like, you know, uh, producer Missy being in California has been less of a stress because we get to see each other when we FaceTime with each other, you know, mm-hmm. and kind of need that, that connection a little bit. Right. So like she can go visit her family and then, we're still connected and doing business and connecting and, and everything. Um, so no, I, I, and she's literally almost literally as far away from me that she can be right now without a passport. Well, almost, I guess she could go to Hawaii or Alaska, but don't go to Hawaii or Alaska, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, yeah, it's kind of an interesting time. Uh, Dutters, how about you? i know i read it (laughs) i am thankful for well especially this time of year my electric blanket 
and my heated car seats. <laughs> and we're not talking about smart blankets or car nope. seats. We're just talking about it heats. You no, know, it heats me. It has a 10-hour turn off, so I don't have to worry about turning it off when I get up. Or And the cat enjoys it when I get out of bed. <laughs> well, and during the night, too, she also enjoys it. But I was thinking bed. about pulling my electric blanket out, but I realized it's kind of old, and I'm kind of worried about that yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a new one last year because it was like, my, my other one was like, uh, it's, the- I'm, it's on 10 and I'm not getting warm at all. I'm like, uh, I think this one's dying. Yeah. The new yeah. one, I'm on three and I'm like, well, this is warm. So, <laughs> you <laughs> know, blanket heating technology has probably come yeah. a long way. Yeah. It's, it's nice. We're futuristic, more energy efficient, I bet. Then <laughs> my, my favorite thing, would, and we don't have one currently, but I had an electric blanket. My favorite thing to do was to actually put it under the fitted sheet. That's what I so do. So it's like mine. you don't even see it. You just kind of hit it, kick it with your foot. <laughs> now, nowadays you could nowadays you could hook it up to like a, 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 a wireless thing that you can activate with alexa sorry alexa don't worry about it <laughs> i'm just gonna see how many different, different to responses hook. to my apologies we really do up. have to hook a le- uh, up to up to the system <laughs> or put it near a mic or something like that do we need to mic our our devices <laughs> i'm really i'm i wish i could get them to and I'm trying to come up with a way to get them to say each other's names mm-hmm. because I have all three. And I'd like them to try to carry on an ongoing conversation, which I think would be hysterical. Um, can I have two? I know I'm the host of the show, but can I have two? Can you have two? Can I have two thankfuls? And I think I think they're both things I think both of you can chime on uh, chime in on uh, in different aspects. Uh, first of all, I'm thank you, thankful for a persistent Internet. Mm-hmm. Um. Katie, I know you drove to back to the homestead uh, uh, north of here for you recently. You probably uh, kind of, I, I imagine you noticed something over the years. Like, I used to go home and there was no internet on yeah. my phone. Versus now it's like just a couple of dead spots and they're surprising when they happen. Yeah. You know, that one part of Nurser Road, that one <laughs> that one part over the hill here on this side of town, right? Yep. And that's it. Like, you, and it's mostly LTE persistent through the entire thing, right? Mm-hmm um so you know it, it just kind of observing that kind of thing and that i i am like <laughs> i often say how i'm like kind of when i'm driving lyft um on the side i'm also still running my business from the car you know in between rides and and waiting for people and, and everything like that because i can from a phone like this um and uh and and you know and even more so like when i go up there you know because it's not a really technologically um up their town or or even my family lives really kind of on you know back on the dirt roads and everything like that and in the 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 still have that access i think is pretty incredible also um i'm very thankful that uh especially lately with a lot of the news that's coming out that i i've i've kind of had side strategies that don't necessarily involve facebook because Guys, I'm kind of thinking about the next thing. After I know we've had this a lot of this discussion uh, on on Slack, Katie, with, with uh, Doug and everybody, right? Um, especially some of the stuff you found recently. Um, just seeing. <laughs> I don't want to get into that necessarily, but uh, but no, it just more and more it just becomes um, people, you know. There, there's been trends of deleting Facebook and everything like that. Thankfully, I haven't seen like my audience disappear. But I'm kind of getting ready for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we've done the transition, you know, from doing all of our stuff. I did this. Well, not this podcast, because I don't think we were on MySpace. I don't think we're that old on this show. But especially Wrestling Mayhem show, we were on former platforms. We talked recently at PodCon about how we were on AOL Messenger for chat rooms and and Shoutcast and and MySpace instead of Facebook and Twitter, right? Before all that stuff existed. And and I think it's kind of inevitable. It's like you will move on to a different thing, you know, whatever that may be. And I'm kind of keeping an eye out for what could be the next Facebook and Twitter as people are becoming kind of dis- disenchanted with those guys now. And uh, where is our audience going to be in technology in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, for this show and pro wrestling and indie wrestling and everything around that, too. So it's kind of a, you know, hey, I hope you didn't build your... <laughs> build your stuff exclusively on a facebook or a youtube because that's kind of the chinks in the armor have been pretty obvious for the last couple of years right well so sometimes i get into discussions with people and they're like why do i need a website i can just use facebook i can just use right this. i can just right. use that and like no you need that site that is always consistent that always is there you know 
connect your Instagram, connect your Facebook, connect your Twitter to that, but you will always have your website and that content will always be out there because if, you know, if you end up getting rid of your Facebook, that's gone. That's if you, your whole business is on Facebook, it's everything is gone. So I think it's another reminder, like, yeah, and that can be taken away at any point, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have friends that are in like certain, you know, podcast realms that are like, you are just determined Pro Wrestling dealt with this on Facebook. They were just determined, like, you are not a thing that we want supported on here because you're, a, you know, we determined that you're an 18 plus thing. So you don't get all these other features we told you to sign up for. Uh, or, you know, we're not going to run ads against it because of certain kinds of the content. I find it interesting because I feel like many companies have swung at Facebook and missed. No one's hit it out of the park. And I feel like. When I talk to the people that have dropped off Facebook, mm -hmm. they'll say they don't, they, they claim not to miss it, but then you try to have conversations with them about things and they're like, they have no clue what you're talking so about. So kind of like how people are like, hey, haven't you seen the commercial with uh, such and such and so and so and this movie coming out and this happening? And I'm like, no, I don't watch TV except for on Monday Night Raw. If it's not a commercial Monday Night Raw, I have no idea. Yeah. You know, it, it, today I, I sat at my at my brother's and, you know, the TV was on all day until we started putting Charlie Brown movies on. Um, and the as seen on TV products are amazing. <laughs> that, OK, that's interesting. When you don't watch commercials and you, like I was if I go to my mom, she'll watch the news in the morning and like the as seen on TV products are just phenomenal. Like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know I needed this army approved. I almost sun visor. I came across an as seen on TV, like a, a store in one of the malls and on my travel. And I was like. I should not go in there. Nope. I really should not nope. go in there. I will buy at least three things. And the things that they make you worry about, like this is going to happen to you. You need to carry a body cam because this is going to happen to you. <laughs> like, whoa. I did. It was Google Class. People weren't happy about that. Okay. <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> Listen, world. Um, but no, it, it is. You know, it, it, so, so I think, and there, you know, there's the delete Twitter, the delete movement. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of the turn off your notifications on your phone movement and prune who you follow use those tools to mute and unfollow and things like that so you're not being i'm still trying to figure out what to do with my news headlines that pop up on my watch because i really don't need to hear about certain individuals every single day because they're doing something stupid every single day right uh it to to like i you you, you gotta cut out the negative influences and when i want to know what's going on versus the let's leave the tv on all day that's going to tell me how uh, vaccines are hurting people and and this and that and the other thing like all day leading to the five o'clock news sorry matt carlins um mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways uh yeah that's i mean that's that that's that's a big thing there i guess i i just feel like we're a long and, and the, interestingly enough i think we're a long way off from facebook just imploding on itself it completely. is but i think when it happens it's going to be like an on off switch. Yeah. It's going to be like this is gone. That got nuked. This yeah. is gone. Now what? Uh, I think that's possible, but I think it, it, it's, you know, I have a similar discussion about WWE recently that nothing is going to take them down except for themselves. Right. And recently there have been things in the news that they've done uh, with certain countries that I think is like, whoop, that's the thing. Facebook, you know, ever just it is top news every night how facebook is probably not doing great things right now and you might not be worried about that whether you know whatever you think whatever that angle is whatever side you're on you have a reason to distrust them right now I, I and think same, you can... i think a lot of it is as one podcast says techno panic and, and i agree with that but the problem is it works and if the mass people think yeah no this isn't good for me and they start deleting it then something else that pops up, like Apple tries to do is saying, hey, this thing is, is secure and we're not going to screw with you. You know, the things that we've tried before could come out now and it's the right time and they start growing, at least to the point where it's worth us exploring as yeah, options. I just think people need are going to need somewhere to go and you're not going to see the mass exodus until mm -hmm. there is another platform. And to me... Instagram isn't that platform, and if you're that silly to think 
Facebook. Instagram is the good platform oh, I to delete, run to. For if Facebook? you're like, I, I don't trust Facebook. I went to Instagram. We need to have a discussion. Yes, because <laughs> I have heard, I have heard that. Con- uh, mm-hmm. I've had that conversation with mm-hmm. people, and I'm like, what? You do realize? <laughs> I did. I, I had an issue with a boosted post on Facebook for a very amusing reason. Is and, this the one you showed me? Oh yeah, but yeah. I, I did. The, I boosted the exact same post on Instagram, and they're like, oh, fine, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, see <laughs> it's really weird that's because they didn't have a they didn't have a uh a uh a uh congressional hearing about instagram specifically yeah yeah so yeah. It's, it's it's a different it's still it's, it's a separate it's separate and not equal kind of thing right like even though we did eject all of our original founders of that it once happened now we're going to facebook guys everything well we'll see in about a year from now if that's still the case but uh, we got so I want to get some more thankful things from you guys out there in the uh, chat realm. But in the meantime, I do want to give a shout out to our friends at Bold Pittsburgh and Bold Sports. Uh, they're covering all the cool Pittsburgh stuff. Uh, if you want the boldest and rawest look at sports in Pittsburgh, Bold Sports gives you all the things Steelers, Penguins, and Buckos. You can find out more at boldpgh.com. Uh, those guys are doing some really good stuff over there. And like I said, I, I akin it to if you it, 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 it's it's like it's like you've been let into uh, having a sports conversation with a couple of uh, uh, great yinzers at the bar. It's just like you just pull, just have a drink with them and sit down and listen to the Bold Pittsburgh Sports Podcast. And again, you can go check that out. Hit the uh, Bold Sports section over on boldpgh.com and thank you to them for being a part of the network. So uh, yeah, there are, there is some stuff um, from the uh, uh, chat realm out there. Um, Producer Missy is thankful for uh, her phone and that uh, she can reach uh, me when she misses me when Aww. she's out gallivanting on the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> oh, she deleted all that other stuff. <laughs> Damn, I was going to read that. Um, and also, oh, yeah, there's some stuff about our hotspot. Uh, <laughs> also, we've been hitting that 10 gig spot on our hotspots on the, uh, that, you know, AT&T and Unlimited plan, Sheila. Um, me uh, from watching she the other night and her, her just now. Uh, but we got some good stuff here, too, uh, from the chat room. Oh, that's from before. Podner says he's thankful for a camera on the phone that is amazing. Uh, partial to iPhones, but there there's uh, also amazing Android cameras. I don't actually want to talk a little bit about Android photography here later in the show, and that really is the case, man. I I'm just continually astonished, and you know, between the 3D photos, I know Katie, you and I have been playing with each other. Actually, all of us have been playing with in different uh, aspects to just just you know this being the thing on my hip and just video. Like I I I am still shocked that videos I've done and edited on my phone are doing just as well as videos that I sat down on software and three thousand dollar cameras, <laughs> you know, um, which kind of goes to show it's 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 not the tools, it's what you do with them, right? So I think that's uh that's that's a pretty good one. Uh Tiny Show to Podcast. Give them a shout out there while we're at it. because uh, they that that's what they talk about. That's their wheelhouse over there. Um so want to check in we had a, a guys had a lot of stories over there on the uh facebook group um i thought this was interesting place sony playstation will skip e3 in 2019 um next year will be the first e3 in 24 years without sony wow 24 years is that is that i didn't even realize the, it was around that long i read well, this i read a portion of this the other day and i was like wow i didn't realize they were around it kind of makes sense because it was like 1996, so that's like 22 years. And then even before that, the Sony PlayStation was well, they had video games because mm-hmm. I remember like the old like Hook games and stuff were were like like Sony you know Sony Productions or you know Sony Software or whatever the case was. And then they um, the uh, the the ill fated Super Nintendo PlayStation CD system, which became the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So they were there. With that, not necessarily with the PlayStation as we know it. So that makes sense for, that mostly makes sense for timing, I guess, right? Is that what we're looking at? 1994 might have been their first year? Maybe. Seems like it. So, um, and, and I think Nintendo's already pulled out. I think Microsoft is mostly out the door as well. 
uh, with their stuff, or maybe I'm thinking CES because I think there was a couple stories like that that were coming out this week. So um, no, I think that's that. E3 has just become so devalued. I there was some podcast that was I was listening to about this, and they were like, "Well, Sony should just do their own experience." It's like actually Sony does do their own experience. We have uh, our, our friends of ours, uh, Chad. Uh, Chad, the Shan Doc Remedy over at the Wrestling Mayhem show, um, they go to the Sony Experience because they are super Sony fanboys, and and I mean it's more of a fan thing I think than development, you know, where E3 was like more of a press and and trade show, right? And I guess if they're not getting much out of it, plus I mean think about everything moving the digital. Speaking of digital, well, and that's where I give Nintendo a lot. Sorry, go ahead. That's where I give Nintendo a lot of credit with their uh, what do they call them? Like the Nintendo, the uh, Nintendo Directs, the Nintendo Directs. It, it's almost like they have a mini E3 like every two months. Mm-hmm. So, what what I don't see coming out of the other vendors is that type of Nintendo Direct. I think Microsoft may have had one. They recently. had their own events like, though. They the like they can still zero one eight like, or whatever it they, was. They still want to rent a hall. And have a giant, giant multi kabuki screen like presentation out there that that impresses you, right? But what does that do for the other cro- cross platform companies? That doesn't help. No, that it, well, EA EA does their own thing, right? Mm-hmm. Ubisoft does their own thing. They're trying to make their platform and brand as big as the the main guys, um, but they're also like the super super brands, right? So I, I don't know. It, it's it's. It's a trend. I don't know the you know the lessening of E three. We still I know some guys, some local guys that go out to E three, and that's a big thing for them. But these like PAX East and PAX West are becoming big things too to get the word out about games for indie developers or mid sized developers or things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll be interesting to see. Um. <laughs> so it, this is actually from uh, Dave Ponder, uh, from someone whose work runs a show. Uh, this is true um they, they do they do do a conference with his with the work that he's at uh it's hard to get people interested in intending think about it. when we're looking at like like the podcast conferences and stuff and the, when you know we ended up going to one this year but man i'm thinking twice about going to the next one when you look at the price tag look at the the time and and everything to go to to something like that i mean that's a lot of energy i know that was always a big dream when when apple used to go to wwdc apple like somebody that big it it was they had to shut everything down. Like they didn't get Christmas. Mm-hmm. Christmas was canceled if you worked for Apple because they had to they had to gear up for those announcements at WWDC at the like the first week of the new year. So, um, was it WWDC or was it MacWorld? I yeah, I thought it was WWDC was no no you're right it was MacWorld yeah you're right WWDC is usually June, June. right um yeah also digital. Uh, Microsoft is apparently considering building a discless mic- Xbox One for release in uh, 2019. They kind of wanted to do this out the gate. And everybody got really mad about um, the console having to phone home with their copy protection schemes. I guess I, I see the you're, point. You're, you're, you an Xbox, have... you're an Xbox player. I'm an Xbox player. You still have... You still... Where I wonder is you still have the areas... They mm-hmm. don't have internet. Well, I, I don't think this is exclusive. I don't think this is a thing that you only offer this version, mm-hmm. right? It'll you be in s- amongst others. Yeah. Just like, I, I know I keep going back to this, WWE Network still exists, but they also make DVDs of their pay-per-views for you to buy at Walmart. That covers the rural areas, right? We And what what would be interesting is, can I get a discount on my device for it not having that? And can you make it slimmer? Mm-hmm. I never had a problem with the phone home personally i did have concern for people that live in rural areas where they can't get a 22 gig download very easily it, yeah it's fine if it's, <laughs> yeah. it's fine if it's not the only option yeah i, I think your discs are going to exist i think they're going to shrink like like the availability of them right mm-hmm. which is going to further kill gamestop uh <laughs> you know i mean we we what was the uh playstation tv that was um it was something they tried like, like years ago, but it would only take the streaming video games, like from your PlayStation Plus account mm-hmm. and like the, the Gaikai service they bought and everything, right? So I, I don't know. I, when's the last time you bought a disc? It's been a long time. Yeah, it's. And I'll be honest with you. There's games like that. I have, I have the disc sitting on the shelf, 
that I'm too lazy to get up and <laughs> take the disc out of the package and put it into the machine. You know, that is true. When I, but if it comes on games for gold, it's getting downloaded. Oh, yeah. Played. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I checked the box for all the old Assassin's Creed games. They're sitting on my de- on my on my on my uh, shelf. And it is. I'm not sitting there and looking at the, my shelf and saying, "Hey, what can I play?" I'm flipping through what's installed on the system and say, "Hey, what can I play?" Because mm-hmm. that's what we're used to, right? So I don't know, Katie. What do you think? You know, of of, of a discless system here is that more appealing than having the clutter of uh, of of more discs at this point? You don't have to pay for a, a Blu-ray player and all this stuff that's a part of it. I know, I know, you don't have the <laughs> highest of technology, I was but tell you, I was super excited. I found the Sega CD system at my mom's. What? We need to talk about yeah. some stuff then. So yeah, because I have some stuff to play. Yeah, talk about stupid boxes and packaging. The Sega CD stupid boxes. Oh and packaging. man, is you remember a, those things? They were massive. Is it, it a side load or is it a? Uh, no, it's a little. It like opens and. Wait, wait, it, was, it, it, it like sits beside like the. the... Yeah, it was. It's so it's like a flat platform. Yes. And then it's on the side here. And then what you did was you took your your, your Sega and slid it in. So yeah, it became it's this like massive... on top of the plastic yeah. piece. In the video. <laughs> it wasn't the one that was just looked like a, a, a laser disc player that you put underneath. No, no that that one that looks impressive. No, it has a drawer and everything. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the version I had like three of them that never worked. <laughs> that, like, hopefully, it, mine or still did not works. last long. So hopefully. Yeah. If you do, I got some games to play. <laughs> yeah, but that was but that was all of it because it, it was all about the, the 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 shelf real estate, and they were like, "Hey, this has to look cooler than the cartridge game sitting on the shelf." So yeah, those giant yeah packages. From there to I don't even want to. How many games are in my library right now? Really? Xbox, thanks to Games for Gold. You know, it's 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 insane right now. But it, but it's weird because I wouldn't even. Other than if streaming is the only way to get it, I wouldn't consider, or download, digital download is the only way to get it, I wouldn't consider getting a digital download on my Switch. Mm-hmm. I'm cartridge for everything. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because I'm worried about running out of space on the device. And I do, I recently did put a pretty big SD card in it, but I, I don't know. It's weird because like for that device, I don't want... The digital download. So, so you, because you're still kind of in that Game Boy mindset, right? Where you're like, I just want to have a bandolier of cartridges. Yes, yes, I, I do. I, again, I have the PlayStation and the Game Gear on on the nightstand, and I, I just like it's just nice to open the book of cartridges, right? A little bit, like just these little cards. Mm-hmm. You know, you put you put them in, playing your Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle and your Doctor Mario, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Also, I really need to get more Game Boy Advance games. I have like three of them for some reason. I just play the original stuff in there, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's the, it's the way to go, right? Uh, there is a Riz comment on this. Uh, of course, it, it, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, he says uh, companies have dipped their toe in this uh, uh, before, and he was all for it then, and he's still for it now. People like a physical disc, but you buy um you you buy the downloaded game and even if you uh, need to make space for another game you still have it in your database and that's the thing because I've been up until now really kind of weary of buying digital movies exclusively mm-hmm. right like I buy the disc that has the code so I have a disc that I've never used but I have the code and now it's everywhere I trusted game platforms before I trusted the movie studios I oh, see I switched over the same. Same way I switched over for games, I switched yeah. over for movies, especially once Movies Anywhere came about, mm-hmm. and they kind of centralized that registration. That changed. I well, well, on on that, I bought Fantastic Beasts this week because I hadn't seen it and I wanted to watch the new one since it was coming out, um, and it was like ten bucks on iTunes, and of course I bought it on iTunes to watch it that night, and then I messaged Missy out west, and I was like, hey. If you want to watch Fantastic Beasts, it's on the account whenever you want. So if I versus if I bought a disc, I wouldn't be able to do that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, like this kind of decentralized things. As long as you're okay with that, and we're talking about platforms we don't think are going to go away. We were worried about Ultraviolet. We're worried about uh, not Vimeo. Um, what's Voodoo? The, Voodoo? 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 Yeah. Like we, we didn't really trust them. They're still around, though. They're still around. They got absorbed in and stuff, you know. But it still was like there was plenty of them. Like if you bought like movies on Target Direct, that went away. You know, Mm -hmm. Blockbuster Direct, that went away. Um, I think the Redbox streaming went away. So I think that's we're at a point where it's like okay, these are for my 
you know, how long does a disc last? How much does a VHS last, right? Uh, for my watching life, this should be here. And my Empire Strikes Back got scratched, and I'm like, well, buying the digital download, I don't have to worry about that getting scratched. <laughs> <laughs> I got a text, all caps. I wanted, I wanted to watch Fantastic Beasts and totally forgot you did that. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I'm at that point. Or I'm buying, like, the entire season of Lucha Underground instead of trying to watch it on, like, you know, somebody else's Comcast account um, and trying to keep up with that. You know, it's just easier to do that. And it's nice. It is nice to have things like that that you know you're going to enjoy again. It's, at some point, I'm going to rewatch all Lucha Underground. I know that's going to happen. Um, and, and it's nice to know it's there. So uh, one last Bless quick you. one. Go Bless Thank you. you. One last quick one. Uh, Brian Crawford, our friend from the River's Edge, who also streams us over there, uh, lets us know that the uh, minister in charge of Japan's cybersecurity says he has never used a computer. Brian lets us know that maybe there's a job opening soon for one of, that one of us can fill. Uh, because apparently qualifications. Um, <laughs> how did he get this job? To maybe he's with? just saying he's really secure. Because oh. no one can get his data because he never used a computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one I'm doubting your that's stuff the case, you don't got but a I wow in, in in Japan, which I feel like I feel like it's one of the most techno- technologically like progressive places in general. Um, he is also overseeing the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, and uh, he had occasionally attracted media uh, coverage for his head scratching public comments. So this is not the first time uh, showing a knack for giving baffling uh, replies. Oh, well, I'm glad that's international uh japan man well you know what um i do you you know what you know what i I, i'm not gonna hear if i go in a slice on broadway that the people making my pizza have never had pizza (laughs) because i'm fairly certain that they've eaten the pizza and there are good friends over there slice on broadway supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up here are the original on broadway in the beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh as well as our other locations in carnegie the west end and pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates it's kind of cold over there but they're still making some pizza and keeping it warm so if you're downtown hop over the bridge and uh, get that as well uh check them out slice on broadway.com's pgh underscore slice on the twitter's and I say they've been supporting us on this show for a good, good, long time. I say, if nothing else, I, this this is this is one of the like proudest things I get to say when I'm podcasting is that we do have a sponsorship and get free pizza from one of the best one one of the best places in town. Uh, and thank you for feeding our guests here in the studio uh, and uh, keeping keeping this podcast train rolling uh, here in the dinner hour for the awesome cast and other shows here on the Sorgatron Media Network. Thanks so much to those guys. So I wanted to touch on a little bit more of that uh, phone photography. And Chilla, I, I, Chilla Katie, I, I'm wondering if you guys had seen this. Have you seen Pixel's Night Sight camera mode? I, they showed this at the Pixel announcement, didn't they? This is a Pixel. Yeah, it was probably at the announcement. But the, but it's been getting in the hands of uh, some people. Uh, there's an article we were we were checking out over at... Uh, at uh, Engadget, and I know I've heard oh, a lot of people talk the about food. these. You saw the food one, yes. <laughs> I saw um, food. But it's it's basically like opening, you know, opening the the camera for a bit longer, you know, bringing in more light, and it's been pretty good. Oh wait, this is this is cool. Um, they have the slide effect. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, Engadget, the before and after thing. I love it. It's just like in front of the Dolby Cinema uh, preview. When they tell you, yes, the projector is still on. Uh, and everybody laughs every time because somebody's it's somebody's first time. Um, but no, yeah, look at that. Look, that's some delicious looking Marmite. Yeah, I was say, in this uh, in this picture. The food looks looks, looks better. Um, you can kind of see um, in this there's a, a fairly dark picture, like kind of a low light environment. You know, we've all taken those pictures and been disappointed with it. That's when we start using a flash and making the you know the the cardinal mistakes of uh, uh, photography, um, but uh, the left shot with night sight like actually looks like a passable picture. It's not perfect by any means, but it's it's definitely passable. Um, this is pretty great, and uh, but no, they did release it. It's um, there as part of the Pixel line. I think they were saying that it, the older Pixels might be getting at least last year's edition. But yeah, I heard might be. Um... The, the interesting thing to me is that you don't get a lot of noise with this, however mm-hmm. they're doing it. Um, I think it it is computational, though. 
So it's kind of like what we've been talking about with um, with with the iPhone, how a lot of the portrait modes and things like that have been like just through the CPU, right? More than what we're doing with the lens lens technology. So th this is kind of there, and they, and Pixel's been doing this a bit here and there too. But this is like the most kind of striking example they've they've done. Also, I'm amazed. I I don't know if this is the one that somebody. I was trying to help somebody um, figure out if they can do like a portrait mode that, that turns into the 3D photos like we've been doing with our iPhones. Mm -hmm. And there is a food mode on, on I believe this was a Samsung or an LG phone. Oh, jeez. Um, you know, when you're taking your Instagram mm -hmm. of their food you're eating. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I don't know. I, uh, Katie, I know you, you're you really big on your phone quality with your uh, iPhone 10 over there. Oh, I know. Is, is, is it's this... going to be gone soon because I am I just got the email that I'm eligible to upgrade. Already? <laughs> yeah, I did the yearly thing. Oh, you're on the yearly? Best thing I've ever done. Wow. I'm so excited. Wow, you're due. Yep. You're due. Are you, uh, are you thinking about something like this or just going with the next iPhone? I, I'm not brain no good to learn a new phone <laughs> at this point. <laughs> There, it's like it's amazing. There's certain things that I'm like, I can do this and do this, and I'll learn this is and this, I'll try this. And, but that, and my phone is like such a constant in my life that I, I don't relearning how to use my phone would probably. Are you? Are we? Are we just getting to that age where you? That's can't fine. I, I'll be old. You're crotchety. <laughs> Call uh, what I'm, you want. <laughs> oh, 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 Granny Katie can't get a new phone. Nope. Try and tried it. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand them. <laughs> like why isn't this doing a thing because we tried remember i think it was what well, gosh what two you or three years ago the galaxy s yeah my yeah. mom and i both did and we both freaked out we're like no we can't do this i don't know how to call you it was so bad it was Jeez. so it was so funny the, the interesting thing to me from a google perspective is they're always so good about going cross-platform so is there something specific about the pixel that allows for this or is this something is that it? they could i feel like this is almost like an app that you eventually S download and that's wouldn't it be interesting if google said hey we're going to give the camera app to ios people but the only thing it does is save your photos to google photos or something yeah something like that where you're kind of hey, that's fine too trapped into their ecosystem which i'm fine with but you get these added features and benefits um i think it could be interesting and, and i don't see I haven't heard as of yet why they can't offer this to other platforms like iOS or, and I'm sure it's not long before Samsung gets something like this if Google doesn't give it to them. So yeah, I, I don't see what, 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 prevent, what keeps this well, as here, a locked feature. Podner's asking, free. is the computation done on the camera or in the cloud? Because that'd be the Google thing, right? Right. To do it up in the cloud. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Oh, no. Matt Carlin's is here. He heard me ba he heard me bashing his, his TV station, and he just rolled right in. <laughs> uh, but anyways. But no. Um, yeah, well, yeah if, it, if it's cloud-based, uh, you know, the only other thing I could think of is, is, you know, we talk about how the CPU... Yeah, this discussion's happened with the iPad, where it's like, man, that new iPad can do so much stuff that nobody's taking care of. My mom has an iPad. You know what she was doing today? She was playing the Bubble Pop game, the Snoopy Bubble Pop game, and I'm thinking, man, this is the height of gaming on this thing that can do so much more, isn't it? Um, but, you know, that, that's the thing. Also, how much can get into that hardware and do do that? You know, is, is this... If it's not in the cloud, is it because they are Google phones and they kind of have a little more direct to the hardware kind of connection kind of situation? So I don't know. Um, Chilla, did you is it's who who put in this the adorable case that turns my phone back into an i or I'm sorry my Apple Watch back into an iPod? Oh, that was my me. brother was just showing me this thing. Tell me about this. It, 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 please describe what this looks like for the audio listeners because it's it's kind of it's interesting. Yeah, so if you ever had like the old iPod, like the like the original iPod. By the way, the dance the... recital that I recorded on Saturday was using an original iPod Ooh. for their music. Oh, like the old school, like, like the old school the dial. Oh, I don't know about the like high, what generation it was, but it was an iPod, not an iPod Touch, an iPod. And and I know like certain DJs that still carry those. Hey, things. I mean, they're they reliable, carry, right? They're reliable. They carry a ton of music. Yep. Um, 
because they weren't flash storage. The, nope. They were. The I still have mine. I have like a hundred and thirty gig one at home. Mm-hmm. I bought Missy before we started getting like you know iPhones and stuff. So so if you do remember that old jog dial type mm-hmm. spin dial iPod <laughs> that was even the screen was black and white for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Um, someone has created kind of a to me it looks like a silicone case to fit your watch in. Um, that kind of makes it look like the old school. You take the band off. Let's yeah. qualify that. You take the band off and you put it inside this like silicon like outline thing, and it basically kind of turns it into a mini iPod. It's it's funny because I'm guessing that dial does. I'm guessing it's just a bunch of extra plastic attached. To oh the yeah, yeah that's it, just for looks, show at that looks, point. It looks fun, uh, and I, I like how they they positioned it to look like the old one where the old white. Um, before they were ear pods, just the earbuds um, kind of sat in front of it. And now they have the air pods. That is the only way. This, that's the only way that this is functional as a, as a music mm-hmm. listening device is if you have the air pods too. Right. Yes. So because I, that, I was like, that's actually a question that I brought up because I was looking at some stuff. You can't listen to the music on your watch from like other Bluetooth headphones. Can you, is it exclusively? No, you can AirPods? join it. You can join. I can it join it. Okay. So that is something I can do with you like my, my skull candy my skull candy ink and stuff, which I finally used for the first time and they were they're delightful to use. Well that's good. Skull candy inked. Um it's what I got when they sent me a a, a, a rebate because um one of my headphones got damaged by the cleaning lady. Uh, <laughs> so uh th- there was that. So it, it was it worked out in my favor. Um but no, this this is cool. Like I don't know functionally if I would do anything with it, but um no. Oh wait, wait, wait. Is this Oh, is this is a picture. I don't I don't think this is at scale, but there is a picture here of the original Ooh. original iPod next to <laughs> the uh the, the one in the case. Yeah, that's the picture I was oh, talking about. Oh, that's the one you're you talking about. Okay, the, I was showing the one below. The old the old earbuds. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Steve Jobs would be delighted at this. And that's even like the old, old, old iPod. That, that is the click wheel, like yeah. the clicky click yeah. wheel with the with the buttons, with the buttons around it. Whoa. Man, those were the days. I'm sure it had like FireWire on. Do you it. remember the Motorola Rocker? No. <laughs> what uh, was that? So, I think Apple must have created some kind of partnership with Motorola Rocker. Google it. I think it was R O K R. It wasn't like R O C K E R. Um, Motorola had a candy bar style phone that actually had the iPod interface built into they it. They called it the. Uh, there's a picture here. It's the iTunes phone. They're, yeah, they're saying. Oh no, it went somewhere else. But um, yeah, and it had it had a app on the device that wow. took you into an iPod on the phone that you could sync the phone with itunes back when remember all the the music was encrypted that's Mm -hmm. yeah i think that might yeah that was it but it it had the whole itunes interface in color before there was like a color (laughs) ipod man that and that was the predecessor to like hey maybe we should just make our own phone Mm -hmm. yeah um, Katie, yeah. tell me about Google VR roller skates. Roller skates. <laughs> okay, so essentially what Google has just applied for some sort of patent on VR shoes, which the, the article is calling roller skates. Essentially, you can walk around in VR without bumping into anything because mm-hmm. you kind of just stay in a place and they don't let you go out of a certain area. <laughs> oh, that's okay. a really good idea. Yeah. It's like, and... Um... <laughs> I love the sub-headline. You'd, you'd have virtual freedom while looking like a real dork. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Google Glass. I know. We've been there all before. This is nothing new. But yes, so it's pre- it's pretty amazing. In that photo, it just what what's happening here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't get what this photo like is about. Jet pack. Is he? Is, no, is, I thought that was. Is he like wearing a, sweatpants? He's definitely wearing sweatpants. He's wearing sweatpants. He's outdoors. I don't know, getting... It looks like a Doom level in 3D or in yeah, and like like. Black and white 3D or something. DC? Isn't that where they have like all the different, um, like the monument with the reflecting pool? Oh, oh that's a water fountain. Oh. Yeah, I d- that's what that, it took me a while to figure out where he was. Okay. Where are you at, sir? What are you doing? Sure. So he's at some major monument on his Google roller skates. So again, there's a patent filing. This isn't anything that there's yeah. necessarily any physically, um, you know, done 
you know, ready to go kind of thing, right? No, because like they're right now, like they're the only other option. Like if you want to do this in VR and make actual physical, you know, go for a while or like a 360 degree treadmill Mm -hmm. or a big Mm -hmm. old space. So this is their thing. And I want to see what a 360 degree treadmill looks like right now. But there's been, well, uh, Ready to Fair one. They had that. Yeah. Right. Um, And then those things where like you kind of walk, (laughs) like you can, you can kind of move. Like they had those, like they had those in like the '90s version. Yeah, the '90s version. But the ter- are you talking about the pterodactyl hunting game? Yes. Yeah. You were, but that you were in that circle, but the major directional control was, was on, still on your thumb. Was oh, on the okay, thumb. okay. I thought I thought there was something. I you played that in Century on. Three Mall on the third floor. On the oh, third floor. Third floor. Man, that's when malls had third floors. Those were the days. That was where the days. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, we <laughs> there's a new Raspberry Pi three. I'm always just kind of an update. It is a cheaper, smaller Raspberry Pi three. That's actually what I think I've run all my um, Raspberry Pis on um, for including the the uh, the, the uh, retro Pi uh, video games and everything like that. Um, they say this is going to be kind of the end of this edition of Raspberry Pi, and they're actually looking to see. They're probably going to be doing something a little more profound for the next one. It doesn't have all the USBs necessarily, but it does have all your HDMI and everything else as part of it. It's a 1.4 gigahertz quad core CPU. Um, so again, you know, a little cheaper. It is down to let me grab the price real quick. Twenty five dollars, I believe, is simply at thirty five for these editions. So, so does it, does it get the? Do you get the same CPU and memory? It's just less ports. Um, I, I'm in. The, I'm in the. I, I want to get a Pi. The A plus has the 1.4 gigahertz, 64 bit, and then that, that is the new version. Is the A plus, by the way. Okay. The B plus is from earlier this year, and I don't see a comparison. Of the B the plus got is. Wi-Fi built into it. They had Wi-Fi they. built in, and it looks like this one is removing things like like the. So you don't need like an Ethernet port and a bunch of USBs. This looks like the addition for you. Okay. So. Um, so another option there uh, for your fun uh, uh, maker needs out there. <laughs> Get rid of that guy. Um, so any other story you guys want to touch on real quick before we get out of here? New Final Cut Pro X. I, I still haven't downloaded it because I'm afraid because I'm like neck deep in a couple of projects <laughs> and, and everything. So um, and Android TV excites you. So. There's not many Android TVs out on the market, to, in my mind. Like, you have the Apple TV, you have the Roku, and then when you jump over to Android, and I'm not counting Amazon because Amazon's the, it's their version. It's not running like Google's mm-hmm. Google Play services on it. You kind of have to use the Fire, whatever Amazon has as their store and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um there's the Nvidia Shield, which seems to be the mainstream Android TV, and there, there's not much more to that. The one thing that there's they're starting to announce is AT and T, and because they own Direct TV, everything Direct, they own everything. Direct TV now, they're going to come out with the first, well. Not the first, but an Android set, to, an Android based set top box that's meant for Direct TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but it will have all of the Android store along with it, which I think is very interesting, especially when you look at the number of applications that no one wants to bring up on Apple TV because it seems like they don't want to lose the sale, but they're okay with you screen mirroring chromecast like i don't i personally still don't view the chromecast as a feasible solution for the masses because the fact that you have to go into an app on another device yeah yeah. like the the standalone device is what gets my interest peaked and this is going to be a standalone android device and i was pretty impressed that it looks like the controller has a giant touchpad on it um, and if you look at like the Nvidia Shield, it, I mean, Nvidia device, they obviously put the, the GPU behind it too, so you can play some pretty, pretty decent games on it. But I wonder if this will open up to the masses, mm-hmm. and I wonder 
it'll be interesting to see how this device sells if you don't actually have to have a direct TV now subscription <laughs> to get it. <laughs> like, will people just flock to this because it's a, it's an Android device and I can throw mm-hmm. Hulu and Netflix and everything else on up, up on every TV. Be interesting to see. Um, they, they, yeah, I heard, I heard a few things about this and, um, I mean, it, it also might be one of those things that makes it easier for people to get direct TV now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, just take this box. It's not like I have to figure out what an Apple TV is or anything like that. Well, that's right. If you look at for the, uh, I would say probably every few months they run a deal where if you sign up for three months, you get a free Apple TV. Or if you sign up for one month, you get a free Roku or fire stick or something like that. So, I mean, they're, they're using everyone else's platform to get their name out there. Right now I'm guessing it's going to be. Sign up for direct TV and get this free device. Mm-hmm. Let's just see. Hey, guys, want to give a shout out. Last one of the show here to our friend Alex Cars out there. Another guy on the West Coast. He does logos, websites, photo, video, so much more. Putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital projects. You can do the logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. You can check out alexandercars.com and alexcars.media. That's Alex, K-A-H-R-S, dot media to find out more. And get started with him. We've done a lot of projects with him here at Sorgatron Media and Psychic Media Services. And definitely recommend him to give you a hand with your project. Uh, go check him out. AlexCars.media. Uh, all right. With that, hey, we're going to have coming up here uh, a programming note uh, for the network here. The Pittsburgh Current is going to be uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, cause I'm sure I'll get any sleep after this. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so you guys get your, uh, fix of that here this holiday week. And, uh, aside from that, I don't think we have anything, uh, going on until next week. Oh, the Turkey Bowl is this Wednesday. Um, this is, uh, the Brohemoth, uh, another, another part of the, uh, Brohemoth Invitational. Our friend, the Brohemoth, who is a pro wrestler here in the area, um, has been doing they have been doing these uh, video game invitationals, and we're going to be doing a Mario Kart Turkey Bowl Wednesday night live streaming on Twitch and whatever other platforms we can get a push to. Um, if you want to join and see the mayhem in person, or if you just want to keep an eye out on the Sorgatron Media uh, feeds or or indie wrestling, I can't remember which ones we stream that on. Uh, I'll have to double check that. I believe it, I believe we're going to be doing it on indiewrestling.us, but we'll probably be on a few of other feeds as well. Uh, please go check that out uh, again. That's going to be starting um, seven thirty or eight o'clock on Wednesday. I mean, it's always that soft opening kind of set up depending on how things go. Um, so look for that. That's how we are uh, kind of kicking off the Thanksgiving weekend uh, holiday weekend there. So go uh, uh, tune in for that. John Chichilla. ChillaTech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. Chilla on the Twitters. Going to be Chilla 57. I think it's Chilla 579 on the Instagrams. <laughs> You'll find them. You'll, You'll find, find me. Somewhere. The Dutters. Hello. Still being spooky. Still being spooky. <laughs> and for a few more weeks. Showing off. I, I, I need to, I need to uh, respond to your um, uh, spooky shower curtain by taking pictures in front of my Ninja Turtle shower curtain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My, my Halloween one will be up for a while longer. It's cats. It's too cute. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, yeah, go check out everything going out. Wrestling Mayhem Show, of course, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time on that Facebook Live. If you're here on the feed, we'll be back for that. Thank you to our awesome audience who's been hanging out here all night. Uh, You guys have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.